Life, Jasper here. Good morning. It's a morning brew day. Um, today we're going to talk about our grain handling system and mashing in. So let's get into it. All right, so we're at the bottom of our grist case. Um, there's four or five ways common in breweries that you move your uh, grist or malt around. Um, there's bucket conveyors, which is just an open bucket used for direct vertical um, going straight up and down. There's also a trough conveyor, which goes at about a 30 degree angle, open buckets and drops grain like that. Um, one of the most common ones in small breweries is an auger or flex auger. Um, these are like an enclosed tube with a screw in it that moves the grain. Uh, they can only go at a certain angle. They're not allowed to go vertical, so that would be a downfall of them. Um, there's also a tubular chain conveyor that has a chain running on the inside of an enclosed tube and plugs coming behind it. Um, and that's pretty common in breweries. And then there's a pneumatic system. And that's the one we've chosen to use. So we have a Nucons pneumatic system here. Um, it's really nice that it, would, it allowed us the flexibility to add it to our system rather than designing our system around it. Able to do direct vertical draws, um, 90 degree bends really well, and it cleans out the pipe really great. So if you can bend down here, you can see where uh, the pneumatic system comes out of the bottom of the grist case. Um, under this outlet, and then you can see it's going nearly a straight vertical up that wall as the grain gets carried to the mash tun. So we'll turn this on and I'll show you that pneumatic system working and talk a little about a little bit about mashing in as well. Cheers. Before you start bringing grist into the mash tun, you want to preheat it. Just run your uh, hot water 185 through your spray ball, rinse it down the drain. Um, it's just a way to preheat the tank so you can use a little lower strike temperature. And then you want to run your foundation water. Uh, your foundation water just should cover your screens by an inch or two before you start dropping grain onto those screens. It helps uh, keep that bed afloat. So you kind of look in there and see what, how we're adding our foundation water. We add it through our hydrator, if you can see that. And you can also add your brewing salts at this time. So once our foundation water is good to go, we'll start bringing our uh, grist through the hydrator. We'll take a look at that. All right, this little clear piece of pipe, you can see the grain falling through there. It's controlled by the slide gate pushing in and out. We do anywhere from 35 to 45 pounds a minute. And then this one inch tube here is where our strike water is coming in our hydrator. All right, we're dialing our strike temperature. Got it at 166. See our uh, hydrator working with our water and our grain mixture, dropping into our mash tun. And then you'll just use a paddle and spread that across the screen and mix in during this uh, doughing in process. All right, here's a look inside our grist case um, when that pneumatic grain transfer is happening. This is how it sucks it on out of the grist case. Got the, all the grain and water in here in the right ratio. We usually like to use a 2.6 to three uh, weight to weight ratio of grain to water, or water to grain, sorry, um, in the mash tun. Uh, different thicknesses of mash can affect enzymes, um, also pH and strike water temperature. So this is a pretty heavy grain bill, but you can look in here and see all the, the mixture sitting there. And then we got the temperature that we like sitting at 152. So that's awesome for the enzymes. Um, some kind of the biochemistry, there are enzymes that are, that are going down a mash. Um, that starch inside of uh, the grain or the grist, starch is usually made out of like an amylopectin or an amylose. And then in your uh, 
In your mash, you have alpha and beta amylases. And those are two of the major enzymes um, that break down that starch into fermentable sugars. Alpha is a liquefying enzyme, just kind of exposes a lot of um, reducing ends for the beta amylase to come and uh, come and chop it into smaller fermentable chunks. So usually this wort, when it's all said and done, is composed of five fermentable sugars, maltose and maltose triose, make up about 85% of that sugar composition here, and then glucose, fructose, and uh, sucrose um, makes, up the, makes up the rest in here. Um, some other mash enzymes you have working in the, in the mash ton, you have uh, in exopeptidase, uh, which is like a carboxyl pepsidase, and that cleaves um, amino acids off those proteins. Goes for your yeast health is also taking place in here. Um, you, you've seen people talk about maybe like a lower mash temperature or a, a program temperature having a, a protein rest. Um, I'd rather call that a, a beta amylase rest or a, a dry rest, trying to get a drier beer. Um, that protein rest, usually that, um, I believe it's an endopeptidase, most of those enzymes will get denatured in the malting process, in the kilning process of it. Um, and the mash, um, there's not enough in the mash to really break down. Now that lower mash temperature can reduce proteins by precipitation. It combines with polyphenols and drops out in your, uh, in your mash tun as like a, a dough-like teague that's on top. It can make wort separation tough, but as far as a lower uh, mash temperature doing enzymatic uh, reactions on the proteins, it doesn't really do that. It's more of precipitates proteins. Um, so something to think about. And then um, there's also lipoxygenase, um, LOX, and that's more has to do with hot side aeration. Um, but also, again, that uh, lipoxygenase is denatured for the most part in the kilning process of, of malting and you won't have to worry about that um, hot side aeration combining with uh, fatty acids to make staline compounds in here. So I don't really believe in hot side aeration too much. Um, some, aeration, some air in the mash can also help precipitate polyproteins, or po I mean polyphenols, sorry. Um, so it can actually help. And the lipoxygenase, which everybody freaks out about, is mostly denatured in, uh, in the kilning process of malting. So that's just a quick uh, overview of uh, some things that are happening inside the mash tun. Cheers. All right, so we'll mash in for about 40, 45 minutes. And yeah, um, so that kind of concludes our grain handling and grain transfer, as well as a little mash tun overview. So hopefully you enjoyed that video and it gave you something to think about. Until next time, keep drinking.